share my screen. It's not really necessary, but I have a long list for you of 50 plus different places that you can walk your dog. So I've been looking forward to this because I like talking about walking our dogs in different environments because it's important for you and your dog to get some variety every day if possible. Okay, let's start. Today I want to talk about different places we can go for a walk. Uh, I mean, we all know that we can go for walks different places, but sometimes we just need reminders that we can do that. Walking our dogs is something that we do every day and we do it I think it's the activity that we spend most time doing with our dogs I mean like in general like as an activity it's walking going for walks so dogs need enriched environment they need to use their noses not only the noses of course that's very important for dogs they're kind of born to 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 smell that they're really good at that they have uh, 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 their smelling is so much better than ours so they are meant to to use their nose much more than we are but they also um, need to use all senses hearing seeing even feeling touching touching so we're going to talk about that when it comes to different places to walk as well um, and uh, today I went for a walk with my dog Wilma here in the woods. Uh, woods are very exciting, aren't they? Because there is a lot of wildlife, at least where I live. Uh, well, depend. I mean, I'm sure there are places the more wildlife than here. But I live in the woods here in Norway, just outside Oslo, and there are uh, deer, uh, fox and quite a lot of moose actually and there are occasionally wolves as well so uh today of course i have a basset hound so they really love 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 smelling but today we spent about 40 minutes in the woods and we didn't get very far because she found so many good smells for her and for me it's more important that she's doing something when we're walking like that she enjoys her time being outside then how long or where we're walking the walk we do every day the walks with my dog is for the dog not for me and we need to um, keep that in mind I don't think we as dog as the caretakers are uh, necessarily uh, um, what do I want to say now I want to say that before I knew what I know now I thought it was okay to walk the same route every day actually I heard that it was okay to walk the same route every day dog trainers told me it's very important for dogs to have routines and to walk the same place every day so they can recognize the smells and blah 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 you know i heard that as well so i thought i was doing the right thing um but then i learned more about how dogs are what what they are all about how they function their behavior and so on and i realized how important it is to go for walks in different places variation which is also good for me and my brain because it makes me think <laughs> it makes me plan sometimes and I said this is very individual of course it is some of you live in big cities in the middle of the city center some people live you know on the mountain uh, where there are no people and in villages towns by the sea you know everywhere big cities small cities towns so from your perspective, where you live, there are many different places that you can walk that you haven't even thought of, I'm pretty sure. And I would say, as a general rule, you should at least strive to go for different walks, uh, like for walks in different places twice a week. That's just a number I made up. This, you know, um, if you have a car or if you can get somewhere else, 
if you can do it every day that's fine as well uh, and again it depends on your dog if you have a dog that is fearful you shouldn't you know uh, take your dog to new places every day uh, then you have to work on other things <laughs> before you start doing that so um, so it all depends on you where you live your dog and uh, everything so since I can't share the screen, I'm just going to start reading from my list. I found now 54 pla different places. And, and um, keep in mind, when you're walking your dog, if, you're, if your dog stops and smell, I know most of you heard me say this before, but hopefully we have some new people here. Uh, or if you share, new people get to, to learn this as well. So it's important that when your dog stops, you stop. Let your dog finish smelling. That's very important. Actually, this, this is studies being done on this. And it, it's kind of logic as well, I think. Considering how important using the, the sense of smell is for dogs, imagine being pulled away every time you are, you are using your nose. So they do get a lot of information when they're using their nose. It's like um, reading the newspaper. I know it's an old fashioned way of saying it, but or updating your Facebook feed or Instagram feed for dogs. So imagine if someone constantly interrupted you or told you you were not allowed to do that. So when you start reading an update for a friend and you kind of write at the end, but someone says, no, you have to go even with force you know what that does to you that will make you more frustrated so it will not make you less stressed it will make you more stressed and more frustrated also observing using other senses like their eyesight and their hearing so when they stop and observe when they stop and look they have to they also need the time for their brain to to absorb everything around them. So let them. If your dog stops and looks, and even sit down and look, then, you know, it's a good thing. It's like, you, you can really compare this to us. So if you are in a new place, and now today we are talking about going to different environments, going for walks in different places that you don't normally do, um, it's really very logical that they would stop and watch what's going on. Look around. Just, you know, see, oh, what's going on here? What do I have? And remember also their eyesight is not as good as ours. So they don't see things as clear as we do. So they might, some of them might need some more time. And some of your dogs are maybe senior dogs and really their eyesight isn't as good as it used to be. And even listening. So I... What I enjoy on, on my walks with Wilma is when I see that she is, she's stopping, she's pausing. Sometimes she's just standing there for a little while and, you know, could be 15 seconds. Uh, this, of course, if you do this in the morning before you go to work and you're really busy, you, um, 15 seconds sounds like, uh, feels like 15 minutes. So keep that in mind. Um, allow for that to happen have spend an extra five minutes get up five minutes earlier we can all do that even i can <laughs> so um and they they stop they look around sometimes she even sits down and if there are people people talking or something happening like a car starting or something it's good she sits down and she's like kind of listen to the people watching and i can see her observing you should start doing that more because to you as well, I can promise you, and this comes from, I know what I'm talking about now, blood pressure, my friend, your blood pressure will also go down when you relax a bit more on your walks. So do not have the focus on how far you're going to walk, how many steps or, or you know, miles, whatever. Just, just say it's better to actually decide the time i'm going to be out for 30 minutes 40 minutes whatever 
And if you don't get very far, fine, at least, you know, not at least, but it ha had a good time. And I'm just, I'm recording some other lectures from something else now. And yesterday I was talking about the importance of uh, letting your dog also choose the length of the walk. Because some days your dog feels shitty, I'm sorry to say. Just like us, they don't have the best day. Could be anything, I don't know. But sometimes they want to go for a long walk. Some days they don't want to go for a long walk. And do not freak out if it's raining and your dog doesn't want to go for a long walk in the rain. Who wants? I mean, most people and most animals don't, or dogs. First of all, put on a raincoat and then see if that helps. And then, you know, uh, you, you can go out. But of course, they need to go and relieve themselves. They have to go out and go to the toilet, of course. Okay, now I'm just talking. <laughs> Let me start with the 54 different places I found um, when I used my brain yesterday. So let's start with the very, very uh, obvious. This all sounds obvious when I... When I read them through before the live today, I thought, oh, this is so obvious. And that's the whole point. It's obvious. So I want you to think about all the different options that we have. So obviously, urban streets. And now I'm talking about you can walk in a different street or a different area of your town or your village or your city. And depending on where you live, even for a small town, there are many different uh, routes that you can walk. Uh, obviously, city parks. Parks is a great place, I think, because, you know, you can really sit down there and, and watch. It's also good for young dogs that you need to uh, uh, help getting used to the environment. So to sit down and just observe and relax, it's, it's really nice industrial areas that's great places actually and after work there are no people there depending on where you go of course but many places there are no people but there's a lot of machines imagine these big uh, machines the i don't know what you call them but let's just say tractors whatever they've been everywhere imagine the smell on the tires on these machines great great fun for dogs train station bus stops recycling station an outdoor museum hiking trails in the mountains obviously forests beaches beaches if you have you know the opportunity to go to a beach once in a while it's good exercise for you and your dog walking in sand so we're now talking about not only because it's important not only to walk on on pavement that's boring for all of us it's not the best for any of us the best is actually forest you know natural ground yeah but uh, sand is is good as well uh, lake shores riversides farm fields can you imagine the smells uh, campgrounds where people go pa camping um, botanical gardens, wildflower meadows. In Norway, we have a lot of ski centers. I don't know if um, if that's the right word for it in English, but somewhere where there has been a lot of, of people is always a good place to go for a walk. Not necessarily when there is a lot of people there, but afterwards, so when, when it's closed, when the ski lift no longer you know moves, uh, or in the early morning when when it moves <laughs> it depends again on your dog yeah if you have a fearful dog that is not used to this it's not good but for for an ad adult dog that is socialized and have no problems for it, it could be a good experience there are people there there are a lot of smells or has been people um, amusement parks obviously again not when there's a lot of uh, people and I don't know if you can actually walk into amusement parks when they are closed, though. But around the surrounding and definitely the parking and in front of, you know, 
the thing is that I realized that I, you know, there are so many places to walk, like a bus stop, like I just mentioned, a bus stop. An empty bus stop has so many smells because there's so, been so many people there. So it's, it's a small area, but it's packed with lovely, exciting smells for your dog. Um, if you have had a f some kind of fair or market or anything, you know, locally, um, uh, imagine the smells, <laughs> especially if they've been like this food uh, serving and everything. Um, there's been a lot of people there, different tires, different cars, different, you know, uh, I don't know what you call them, but, um, food trucks, whatever it's in the fair, lots of lots of smells after, during also, if, you know, if your dog is fine with it, if it's a packed with people, I wouldn't really recommend it, but a few people is always uh, good if, uh, your dog can handle it. If there's been a dog show or agility or other dog events, you know, these big dog shows, don't necessarily go on the dog show, but wait till it's finished in the evening when everyone has gone home. It's a perfect place to go and let your dog smell. Any place where there has been a, a course or activity. So if, if you know of places in your area where they have puppy classes or whatever kind of dog activities or courses after the course is finished. You know, when I was doing courses myself for dog owners, and when we were finished in the evening, I let my dogs out and they loved it. They loved it. Uh, grassy hill sites, hills or walking doesn't have to be a very, you know, long hill. Uh, I don't like, I don't enjoy walking up, you know, in hills myself, but hills to walk up and, and down, like it's good for the body as well for your dog, not just, you know, um, on flat, flat ground. Um, okay. Uh, countryside roads, wetlands mangrove forests for coastal regions obviously uh if you live any if you live on iceland or something volcano trails caves exploring caves of course safety precautions and all that but uh historical ruins and sites that's nice for you too i think any botanical reserves anything like that waterfall trails now, I'm lucky living in Norway because we have a lot of these, except the volcano thing, but we have a lot of these uh, things here. Sand dunes, um, um, rocky outcrops, like uh, that's again a different a, a variety of, of uh, feeling when they're walking. And also remember when you walk in the woods or any such place where it's just not grass or pavement, um, yes, a great advantage I see walking Wilma in the woods here is because they have, I don't particularly enjoy that, but it's, it's good exercise for both Wilma and me, actually. Uh, they've cut down quite a lot of the forest around the house. So you, there's kind of difficult to walk. You have to go over trees and, you know. Wilma, of course, goes under some of them as well. She has to balance a lot, which is great. And my cat is coming as well. And I can see she's jumping from place to place. You know, she found her route. Um, but you have to think there's even a lot of branches uh, somewhere in the woods where it's difficult to walk on. So you have to really think where you put your legs. That's great. Excellent. Just ask uh, Julia Robertson. She would love you for doing for walking places like that with your dog. Um, and of course, paved boardwalks uh, or in city center where it's pedestrian streets. You can go window shopping in the evening and, you know, um, 
if you live in a village, why don't you take your dog to the next village and go for a little walk there? I do that. I see a lot of villages in the new places because I want to find new places to walk for me and for my dogs. Frozen lakes in the winter. Of course, be safe though. College campuses. Now that's uh, that's great place as well. There's a lot of, of people walking around there and a lot of smells. Uh, canal side pass, um, pine forest, of course. Uh, pedestrian friendly city centers. Sport fields when they're not in use. Of course, you have to really make sure that they don't, you know, uh, or you have to pick up if they, they relieve themselves when you walk in places like that. Um, even tennis courts, if you're able to do that. Um, but again, be responsible. Be a responsible dog owner when you walk places like that. Um, if you have a zoo, I'm not sure if, uh, how much I recommend that. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm not a big fan of zoos in general but depending on the zoo and all that you know if it's possible that could be a place for you to to bring your dog definitely zoo shops or pet stores in Norway they're called zoo stores actually that's why I, I thought of that now but pet shops is a great enriched environment for a lot of dogs to bring your dog inside a pet shop and you can let him choose some toys or a new teddy bear or some chew or something bring him inside the store and to get a new well-fitted harness maybe for those of you who are in countries where you have drive-in movies you can walk i actually like that i maybe i'm weird to thinks i'm weird <laughs> but i like to walk in cemeteries Again, we have to be very respectful for that. And I just spoke to a friend of mine here in Norway, where in her area, it's now forbidden to bring dogs at the cemetery, which is, it's, it's sad because I'm sure there's a lot of dog lo lovers there as well. Um, but that's a nice place to walk, I think. Uh, but again, be very, very respectful, of course. Um, outdoor flea markets. When there are people there, if you and your dog can handle it, or afterwards when it's gone or when it's closed. Parking places. This is a bit of a favorite of mine because they're so easy to find. Parking places. And in front of the mall or any grocery store or anything like that, there's a lot of people uh, that's been there. Um, uh, there are sounds, you know, there are trolleys. You can see a lot of different kind of people. It's, it's a, I think it's a good place to be for uh, socializing and just seeing people. Now, I sound like a very strange person. I am not hanging out in parking places, but for walking my dog or just taking Wilma out for, for five minutes on the park. I don't miss it. If I'm able to, you know, if I'm... If I'm in a place where this is convenient and good, it's a good uh, uh, parking place, I always take Wilma out for a few minutes to let her sniff. If it's that kind of parking uh, place where that's a good thing. Um, also, so outside and uh, in the back of grocery stores, I don't know uh, in your countries, but here in Norway, there's a lot of uh, small towns and villages and the grocery stores in the back outside they have all the pressed paper and stuff they have a lot of things stored uh, waiting to be picked up that's a lot of smells in those things as well um even your neighbor's garden now in Germany, many years ago, they started uh, Schnuffel Gardens, I think it was called, maybe it's still called, um, where, uh, and it spread to a lot of countries in Europe, so maybe some of you already know what it is, but it's a really nice uh, thing. So people were um, 
allowed into other people's gardens you can even get stickers could even get them i don't know what it's like now but to get stickers on the mailbox saying that this is a, a schnuffel garden you know like a scent garden so you're welcome to use my garden uh, between so and so hours and of course the, the dog caretaker needed to you know care for the dog and pick up any anything that he left there and the garden the owner of the garden had to make sure that there were it's a safe area for the dog so um it's underestimated so if you have some good neighbors and you explain to them and you know ask them kindly if you were allowed to let your dog go and sniff, sniff in their garden it's a it's a great thing outside any big sports arenas imagine how many people have been there and there have been food trucks and there's parking places all these kind of things and it's usually very big areas and places you can walk uh, for a while okay so that was actually that was 55 if you want to add something please feel free to do so because this list can probably go on and on for for very long this is my 54 examples today <laughs> What I wanted with this is to just inspire you and motivate you to actually do different things with your dog every week, at least, I said twice a week in the beginning, but if that's not possible, you know, sometimes it's better than no times. That's the thing. Yeah. So don't miss out opportunities when you come home from work and you're going grocery shopping bring your car bring your dog with you in the car and let him sniff on the parking place or stop somewhere on the way home i'm sure if you now start thinking that you're going to find new places for your dog to walk and to explore i'm sure that when you're driving somewhere that you've been driving every day for the last you know many years you can still find new places you just didn't think of them okay so let's do this let's bring your dogs to different places different environments um, and especially for you know your day off to go to a completely new place another village or outside your city or something go to the beach whatever mountains uh, it's great, great. Okay, if you have any more uh, suggestions, please feel free to write it in the comments so that we can share it with everyone. And remember that the places that you think is interesting uh, or nice for these kind of walks is not always the same as your dog thinks is interesting. Your dog would probably prefer garbage bins we know how they are don't we so it doesn't have to look nice yeah it doesn't have to look nice it just has to smell nice for dogs not for us necessarily for dogs okay yep thank you everyone use your imagination explore explore new places for you and your dog and let your dog smell Stop, pause, observe, you know, look, even bark. <sighs> People are going to, you know, go crazy now when I say that. But barking, and now I'm not talking about barking like, like a wild, you know, animal that like never stopping barking. But to bark like wah, wah, you know, that's fine. That's fine to come with a couple of bark. Woo, woo, of course. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice week. Bye.